The following program is rated mature. It may contain strong, coarse language, violence, and other mature content not appropriate for children under 17. The views expressed in this program may not represent those of this cable station or its employees. It's 9 o'clock on a Friday night, so grab a seat and you just might see something really great. You've got the time, it's not too late to watch a show that will give you laughs and chills and thrills. There's nothing that they haven't tried, because everything tastes great when it's deep fried. So lock your doors and sit right down, there is no better place to go. Cause it's time for the not so late show. I, I hate Facebook sometimes. Really? Just sometimes? I hate Facebook most of the time. There you go, that's better. Because Why? One time you can be going through your feed and there'll be a story there and you're like, ooh, I want to read that. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, I'll come back to it later. Then you go back to Facebook. And it disappears. There is there is a feature called Save for Later. I've used this feature. I don't know where it goes. Where does it save yeah, I, to? I, I've seen that before, and I did that with a couple things. And I'm like, oh, let's save this for later. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just here. Hello. 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 Well, wait. There's share. I can send it. Like that's, this, that's not what I want. Like Copy link. Singer? Can I? Oh, let's see. Oh, I can save links. So I can add this to my saved links. However, where are my saved links? I sound like an old person. Where is my stuff? John where are you? This is something cool I wanted to talk about on the show. Oh, well, at least I can show you that. Ooh, it's heavy snow on in Hawaii. They got it more is. snow than we do. Yes, they do. Which is kind of funny. Uh, so, Jay, how was your week other than being deathly ill? Uh, no, I haven't been deathly ill yet. Just slightly ill. Everyone around me has been deathly ill, though. Okay. That's uh, not where fun. I work, uh, three confirmed cases of the flu. Ooh, that's fun. Yeah, so uh, we're going to see how this whole immune system is still holding up to the uh, rest of the world. Good luck. Uh, I did. But let me tell you. At least, so, at least something goes wrong, you're close to EMS. That's true. <laughs> let me tell you what a wonderful time we live in. Okay. I, can't, I cannot wait for this story. Back in the 90s, uh -huh. if your washing machine stopped doing something, you'd have to call someone, they'd come to your house, they charge you an ass boatload of money. Yes, not an Wait, ass load, not a boatload. Wait, the 1960s? No, 90s. Okay. 90s, you could still fix it yourself. Eh. If you knew what was wrong. But if you didn't. It's still all mechanical. If you're there really just like, wasn't much electronic. Broke, fixed now. Mm -hmm. All right, how about 2000? No, it was still mostly mechanical. Really doesn't start getting electrical until like early, mid 2000s. Fine, what he said. Yeah, what anyway. I said. So something would break, you'd have to call a repairman, he'd come out, charge you an ass boatload of money mm -hmm. to diagnose it, and then do the labor and everything to take it apart and fix it, and then put it back together again, then he'd be on his way like $800 richer. So okay. he could have bought like a brand new washer and dryer to begin with. Basically, but you like the one you have, except for the fact that it freaking broke! Besides that, yeah. it's all good. Thanks to the internet now, uh -huh. my washing machine stopped agitating. It was still agitating. It was still aggravated, but it wasn't agitated. So here's the thing. Well, maybe it's just trying to fit in with society. It could be. Mm -hmm. Conformist. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So I'm like, there's got to be something online. So I go to YouTube. Kenmore Washer doesn't... Actually, Kenmore Washer, and then it says, doesn't spin, doesn't do this, doesn't do that, doesn't this, that, That's this, not a this, great that. sign. It, you, you type in any brand and put doesn't, and it just... Jason Rayback doesn't spin, doesn't agitate, I, I don't do, know doesn't rinse. Isn't moving, isn't <laughs> breathing. Oh, breathing. Let's check that in case yeah. in the future. So I'm like, oh, doesn't agitate. Cool. Click that. 13-minute mm -hmm. video. Uh-huh. Here's how you do it. And here's how you don't need this tool. Just take this uh, socket and plop it in there, and it's going to work just fine. Okay, cool. Step by step, dude goes through it. I'm like, all right, take that out. And so there's... I take that out, take the thing off, pop the little uh Was this on iFixit? No, it's just YouTube. Really? Okay. Yeah. So he's like, take these off, and in there is something called dog agits, or dog agitators, or agitator dogs, depending on if you're Spanish. Ah, nonconformist dogs. Exactly. 
So he's like, all right, so you, when you take it off, you're going to see that these things are rounded. That's not supposed to be how they are. They're supposed to be like little uh, teeth on it that okay. grabs the center thing, which causes it to agitate. All right. So I do all that. I take it off. I'm like, oh, no, shit. Yeah, there's, there's, they're just round as round can be. There uh-huh. is no teeth whatsoever. He's like, no, go spend your $5. Go buy the new ones. Plop it in. Reverse everything you did. And it's going to agitate again. Well, I spent $10 Mm -hmm. because I didn't want to wait two days for shipping. Mm -hmm. And local appliance shop right down the road here happened to have them in stock. So I'm like, awesome. Hot damn. Yeah, support local business too. So, do all that. They just made 100% markup on those parts. Yeah. I still supported. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Put the new ones in. 180 everything. Put it all back together. Thing works like new. How damn. So the internet saved me hundreds upon hundreds of dollars. The thing of it is, most people will not fix that. They'll just be like, I'm helpless. Oh, yeah. Call someone. It's like, I need a new one. Mm-hmm. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Damn it. Mm-hmm. Right, I'm going to find this story because it's pissing me off. Let's see. What did I do this past week? Yeah, what did you? I was just about to ask you, but you beat me to it. Nothing. <laughs> At all? Nothing. No trips? No other countries? Really nothing. It was... Um, the first week in a while where it's been just relatively, like, pretty calm and boring. I don't really know what's going on. I feel out of sorts. This isn't normal. I don't know what's going on, man. Yeah, I was going to say, this is uh, very weird. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I really did, um, I really did nothing. I, I mean, I'm, at this point, I'm like, I don't, I don't even have any trips on the books. This is, this is freaking me out. Freaking me out. Just a little bit. Uh, this isn't real, man. It's not real. I don't know. Do, do you have any trips planned, Jay? I'm going to go home after the show. All right, and? No, that's it. Wow. couple of boring lives we lead. Rob, are you going to go to Indy this year? Are you ever going to go to Indy? Maybe. You've been so saying now, that since I worked here. Rob's like, I'm going to go to the 100th anniversary. And you were, like, planning that for, like, five years. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. All right. Well, grumble, 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 grumble. Damn it. Well, the hell with it. You want to go into tech news? No, I want this damn thing. Well, can you tell us what it's about? The story is about The Wizard of Oz, as we know it, the movie. Uh Uh-huh. Versus the books, Mm -hmm. because it was a book first that they adapted into a movie. And how it was very, very different from the book. To what you saw in the movie. Is it eight differences between the Wizard of Oz movie and uh, and book? Could be. Is the first one about the Tin Man? No, it was only just a dream. Well, I'm pretty sure we all knew that at the end, anyhow. Mm-hmm. Was it? See, no, no, no. Oh, I found it. Okay. Well, I'll continue. All right. So I'm just going to read it verbatim because this is kind of spur of the moment because there's not a lot of tech news. Ah, sure. Where's this from? Uh, it's actually on Ranker. You're ranker. I am. So, so he's agitated. He's agitated. He is sorry. agitated. I am the agitator. Now, not the Tin Man Hollywood. is a Tin Man because he hacked off his own body parts. Let's what? start with this. Wait, that's the that's in the book. I'll read. The book's Tin Man character actually has a bloody beginning. Born and raised in Oz, he was originally a human man who worked as a lumberjack, aptly named Nick Chopper. So he sounds like a badass okay. uh, lumberjacking motorcycle riding guy. Uh-huh. Nick Chopper fell in love with one of the Wicked Witch's munchkin servants. Okay. So to keep them apart, the witch put a spell on his axe so that he began to involuntarily hack off his own limbs. With each self-inflicted dismemberment, he would replace the body part with a tin replica until he was made entirely out of tin. Tin. Period. Thank you. Except his heart, of course. The movie, of course, skipped this gruesome origin story. Oh, my God. That's pretty gruesome. That was the only one I read, but I'm like, oh, if that first one's that good, let's keep going. Okay. Uh, Let's see. This one, the Wizard of Oz lobotomizes a see-through cat. One of the magical creatures that shows up in Baum's seventh book, The Patchwork Girl of Oz, which I'm guessing Baum is the author because that would make sense, uh, is Bungle the Glass Cat. Bungle is an entirely see-through cat and her heart and brains are visible through the glass. Bungle is cool and aloof, but serves as an ally to Dorothy and her friends on multiple occasions. The wizard himself takes issue with 
how conceited Bungle is and performs an aggressive lobotomy to make her less autonomous and more obedient. He replaces her pink brains with clear ones and all consider her more agreeable post-op. Weird. Yeah. 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 Listening is the new re- Oh, wait, that's an advertisement. Hold on. <laughs> well done. Well played. Forget the Wicked Witch. The book has a princess who steals heads. I believe that's called the Queen of Hearts. Two of Hearts. Yeah. Like any spoiled royal, Princess Languidier? Sure. Yeah. Has her choice of accessories. She has beautiful... So this is all stuff that's not in the movie. Correct. Okay. She has beautiful jewels and dresses, but she doesn't care too much about them. Her pride and joy is her cabin of severed heads. Okay. Have you read the series? No, but I've seen Return of Oz. Okay, well that's cool. So the way you've seen Return of Oz, but not Wizard of Oz. Have you? Oh, okay. Well, that's good. When she's bored of one head, she takes it off her body and switches out for one of a different look. Languidier gets bored of her appearance easily and finds this to be the best solution. The heads themselves are stolen from beautiful maidens in the surrounding kingdom. When Dorothy encounters her, Languidier very much wants to steal her head. So much worse than stealing ruby slippers. That's pretty messed up. Yeah. The Scarecrow is great at snapping necks. <laughs> what? How, like, really? really How twisted wanna see, is The Wizard I, of Oz? I want to see that movie. Right? Yeah. The, the, Who do you the, want to direct it, though? Tim Burton. Yeah? I, I think that anything that effed up has to be Tim Burton. No? no. Uh, who, who, who do you Kevin want? Kevin Smith. Yeah, Christopher Nolan? No. That's a dark movie. That's a, that's a completely different movie from The Curtain Wizard of Oz. Christopher Nolan directs The Wizard of Oz. Coming to a theater near you. Hmm. I still want to know who Rob wants to direct this. I don't have any Come on. You can't say that you... Well, all right. We can't say that we want this as a full movie, and then you just don't tell us who you want to direct it. Mm -hmm. All right, who do you want to direct it? You just want Tim Burton? I think Tim Burton or Christopher Nolan. I really don't like a lot of Tim Burton movies, but I, I think that would be sufficiently screwed up where he might... I don't know. Mm. It'd be an odd movie. It'd be a really odd movie. Mm. What else is messed up about Wizard of Oz? The Scarecrow is great at snapping necks. I think I already did that, but I'll do it again. You so did. Back on topic. Yeah, just to, to reemphasize. In the movie, when Dorothy first meets Scarecrow, they dance off together down the yellow brick road. Uh huh. In the book, Scarecrow takes his newly found freedom after Dorothy cuts him down as a chance to mercil mercilessly seek revenge on the crows that tormented him during his <laughs> active duty as Scarecrow. Okay. In front of Dorothy, he proceeds to snap the necks of hundreds of crows and is described as standing in a pile of black feathers and blood. Dorothy then realizes he's going to be a great road trip partner and invites him along on the adventure. <laughs> Probably as an enforcer in case she comes along any riffraff on mm -hmm. the way. Right. The main villain is half gnome, half rock, and is allergic to chicken eggs. Okay. Mm. Yeah, this book really was about being on acid, wasn't it? I'm just reading because I actually show a cover on this one. So okay. I'm to see who it all is. So by Ruth Plumley Thompson, founded and continuing the famous Oz stories by L. Frank Baum, illustrated by uh, some person I can't read. Hey, thanks. No problem. The Wicked Witch of the West is basically a blip on Dorothy's radar in the books. She's just a villain of the week, quickly vanquished. The real arch nemesis of Dorothy and the gang is the Gnome King. The Gnome King is half rock and half stone. He is a power-hungry, immortal being whose only weakness is the egg of a chicken. Wait, half rock and half stone? Doesn't that make him all rock? I think it's and supposed no to be roll? half gnome, half stone. Okay. But they just got, got caught up. Uh, he is a power-hungry, immortal being whose only weakness is the egg of a chicken, much like the Wicked Witch of the West aversion to water or Superman's kryptonite. The Gnome King's favorite torture is to turn his Who is enemies... also in the original book. He is. <laughs> Very short little uh, stint, mm -hmm. though. Uh, favorite torture is to turn his enemies into inanimate objects and let them slowly lose consciousness and die. In other aspects of his dynamic personality, he has business ties to Santa Claus and spends his time collecting earth minerals. 
cool. Yeah, it's weird. Tin Man cuts off the head of 40 wolves. Yeah, we're going Tim Burton on this one. Because <laughs> really, and then this turns into like a horror slasher flick if it's Christopher Nolan. Instead of Sleepy Time Poppies, the Wicked Witch sends 40 wolves after the Yellow Brick Road gang. Dorothy, Lion, and Scarecrow are terrified, but the Tin Man and former Lumberjack is no stranger to an axe. He pr- proceeds to decapitate all 40 wolves in a bloody massacre that ends with him victorious in a puddle of blood. Throughout many of the books, Tin Man's powers of brutal dismemberment serve as one of the gang's most effective means of doing business. <laughs> and in the movie, if you actually watch and you pay attention close enough, when they start getting surrounded by things in the uh, woods, uh-huh. the Tin Man actually draws a gun. And he actually has a gun in his hand. I've seen the stills from the movie. Interesting. Yeah. yeah huh. All right. Cool. The scarecrow's head is constantly rotting. That's disgusting. Bond picks and chooses when he wants his world of the Wizard of Oz books to reflect real life. In the books, the scarecrow looks more like Jack the Pumpkin King at the beginning of the Nightmare Before Christmas. He's a real Halloween looker, all spiderly limbed and with a big pumpkin for a head. In the scarecrow's case, his head rots just like a real pumpkin. As he adventures with Dorothy, his head begins to cave in and fall apart, which makes him look all the more horrifying. He often needs to find a replacement head, and it slows the gang down. All right. (laughs) The flying monkeys are cute compared to the book's wheelers. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that makes sense for a movie. It didn't work out too well for the film's Wicked Witch of the West when she sent out her flying monkeys. Perhaps she should have sampled from a quicker, more devious brand of Oz monsters like the Wheelers. In his third book, Ozma of Oz, Baum describes the Wheelers as having the form of a man except that it walked, or rather rolled, upon all fours and its legs were the same length as its arms, giving them the appearance of four legs of a beast. He then goes on to reveal that instead of hands and feet, they have viciously fast-spinning wheels attached to their limbs. That guy was clearly on drugs the entire time. Uh huh. Hey, uh. It was a great practical effect in Return to Oz. Yeah. Was it really? Yeah. Interesting. Wait, that was actually in Return to Oz? Yeah. Huh. Uh, I do have, speaking of people who are probably on drugs. Oh, good. You do that, Ellie. I do have a news story. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, speaking of food that's absolutely no good for you, uh-huh. McDonald's. Oh, yeah. Really? Uh, they have reportedly picked up 20 million packets of their highly and weirdly coveted Szechuan sauce for Rick and Morty fans. Mm. The rap reports that the new packets will be available by Monday, or May, if I'm talking, you know, like, Rick and Morty, yeah. Morty. <laughs> uh, just seems appropriate. By the way, if you haven't seen Rick and Morty, it's on, uh, what is it, Adult Swim? Adult Swim, their app, TV. highly, highly recommended. It's completely fucked up. Um, but the rap reports the new packets will be available by next Monday, the 26th. The demand for packets began when Rick said, not, not driven by avenging my dead family, M- M- Morty. That, that was fate. I'm driven by finding that McNugget sauce, M- Morty. Um, on uh, an April 2017 show. That was enough to drive fans at, to various McDonald's hoping to get some of the sauce, and they promptly ran out. Now, starting Monday, the sauce will once again be available for as long as it lasts with the purchase of the McNuggets. There you go. Um, so, uh, d- dude, you're, you're getting a Dell. Like the singer? No, no. Yeah. Actually, Dell. You're getting a condo. Cool. Uh, the New Yorker Post, uh, New York Post reports tech billionaire Michael Dell bought the most expensive home ever sold in the Big Apple. A $100.45 million condo. $100.45. The... Are you want to guess how many thousand square feet that is? In New York? New York. 11,000? Get out. Maybe? The 11,000 foot ah. condo is a duplex penthouse on top of the 157 building at 157 West 57th Street. And it's about a thousand feet above the street level of what's called Billionaire's Row in the city. And if you'd like to be Dell's neighbor, there's still more than 50 of the 130 units available in the building, although at least 73 of them have sold. Uh, by the way, uh, have you seen Black Panther yet? Movies are scary. Apparently, we are the only ones 
Uh, it is a huge hit, and now the merchandising, merchandising, merchandising is uh, here. The Black fashion- Panther, the flamethrower. Uh, the flamethrower. I already bought the flamethrower. Uh, uh, the Fashion Street Style Community uh, Pizza Slime, apparently that's a thing, has teamed up with Wu-Tang Clan's clothing wear, Wu Wear, on a range of streetwear for everyone who wants to show their pride in uh, Wakanda. The uh, so, bleh. The collection celebrating Marvel's Black Panther includes sport hoodies, crewnecks, t-shirts, emblazoned with the fictional African country, and a highlighter yellow atop a rap group's uh, recognizable W logo. Um, what? That's a record? I don't know. I don't All right. No spins. What? What type? All right. This is interesting. I'm curious if you think you could beat this. A guy in India drank an entire bottle of ketchup in less than 30 seconds. Glass or squeeze? Presumably squeeze. It's got to be squeeze. Dinesh. Take a half an hour just to get that started in a glass bottle. Yeah, Dinesh, uh, you take out some teeth in the process. Mm. Uh, Shivnath uh, Upadhyaya. Uh, oh, that new, guy. Yeah, set a new record by downing 14 ounces of the tomato based sauce in 25.39 seconds. Dinesh said, I'm, going, I'm doing this record to prove myself as the best in this amazing world in this particular record field. His previous Guinness World Record achievements include stuffing 88 grapes in his mouth and eating 9.5 ounces of peanut butter in one minute. He holds the record for fastest time peeling and eating a grapefruit and most oranges peeled and eaten in three minutes. Hmm. Do you think you could beat that ketchup record? No. No? No. Who's trying that one, by the way? Like... God, I, who would want to practice that? People in India. Like, I love ketchup. I would not want to even, like, <laughs> Ooh. no. Yeah, that's, no. So I'm just going to go over some of the other uh, titles. Okay. I'm not going to necessarily read them all, though. Okay. Uh, the Scarecrow has a haunting love interest called the Patchwork Girl. Okay. There's a village where people are made of eerie porcelain dolls. Uh-huh. Oh, and that's it. So, <laughs> I didn't realize it just kind of... All right, well, that hand the end. Well, I'll read the last one, because porcelain dolls, that's a little weird. Uh-huh. Yeah, I feel a burp coming. Yes. Uh, there eventually. it is. Pardon me. Someday there will be a burp. Oh, uh, when it was already here. Yep. One of the many scenes that didn't make it into the film adaptation of the first book in the series, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, was the dainty China country. In the southern quadrant of Oz, deep with an enchanted forest, Deep within an enchanted forest is a creepy little place full of sentient porcelain dolls. Uh huh. While some dolls are in pristine condition, others are cracked and misshapen. Once a porcelain person is cracked, they are very difficult to fix. The uh-huh. book describes large numbers of cracked clowns who have been permanently scarred, who have permanently scarred their bodies from doing headstands. Their faces are misshapen and their necks are bent. And they're clowns. And dolls. It's overkill in the creepy department. Okay. That is all. Um, but I found you. You know, when you look at the police blotter, and I'm sure you've heard of some pretty ridiculous calls no. uh, to emergency responders. Well, cops in Pennsylvania responded to reports of what on the loose? Can you take a guess? What state was in? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. A llama. Nope. A camel. Nope. Which area of the world should I be heading? 65 million years ago. A T-Rex? Yes. Cool. Uh, Caps in Pennsylvania responded to reports of a dinosaur on the loose. Which isn't out of the question. In what world? Anyways. This one. Police and in Pennsylvania, yeah. Police in East Lansdowne, home to the world's most gullible residents, uh, said they didn't panic when they got a call about Tyrannosaurus Rex walking through town. Their investigation revealed it was just a parent who dressed up like the prehistoric creature to walk their kid to school. Officers radioed back to dispatch to say there was, quote, no problem. And this is in daylight? This is in daylight, yes. There's, there's yeah, just walking, just walk, walking their kid to school because that's hilarious. I mean, let's be honest, if you, if you were, like, in third grade and you got walked to school by a T-Rex, how amazing would that be? Right? Amazing. That would be amazing. Uh, let's see, what else we got in the news? Uh, 
No, no one cares. Oh, God. No one cares about Lindsay Lohan anymore, let's be honest. Is she still a thing? Nope. Oh. Nope. That's just good for you for getting in recovery. And after that, uh, to go away. We're now in fourth or fifth place for medal count in the Olympics. Are we now? Are, are we really? I think we have like 21. That's, uh, hey, we can legally drink uh, Olympic medals. Oh, yeah. That's uh, something. Delicious. You know, it'd be nice for this to work. Dear Verizon, get your shit together. Mm. Get all your shit together. Put it, put it <laughs> in a shit museum if you have to. Get get a, get a backpack for it. Put, take it to a shit store and sell it. I don't care. Uh, oh, how about this? Cops in Australia are looking for some thieves with a creepy obsession. South Australia police are reviewing security videos showing three suspects stealing a skeleton from a local business. Officials posted the clip online with the caption, Do you have a skeleton in your closet? Hmm. Cops say, They have a bone to pick with the suspects. Ah. Uh, they're asking anyone who recognizes the thieves to give the police a call. Bitty, bitty. Uh, let's see. some tech news or you want to keep going? I'll keep going a little bit. Right. A police, in, uh, police officer in England is a tried and true hero. Okay. Mohammed Nadim saw a man in Greater Manchester fall into the River Irwell. Nadim can't swim, but he wasn't about to let the man drown. It river was a river well. with river or into the or well. That's clever. Uh, he drove down eight feet into the freezing river to save the man and spent about 25 minutes in the water before being pulled out. I can't swim. I'm not a good swimmer at all. And having all the extra body gear was very hard. But what's that? Doing with the accent. Uh, can't swim. Not a good swim at all. He's in England, not Australia. You don't know that. Oh, you, we do not. That <clears throat> Mary Old England. I can't swim. I'm not a good swimmer at all. And having the extra body gear was very hard. But somehow I got to him, and we all got to the side and waited for help. It was very dangerous, but I just had to go in. Seeing this man drowning, I just couldn't wait. He said. And these co-workers are now jokingly calling him the Hoof. The whole thing was caught on his body cam. Although I don't know why I was doing like a British royal accent for that, yeah, but. That was it was more of a British royal accent, yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's get some tick, 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 tick news. Okay. If you're, unless you want to chicken out. Ha 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 Disney uh. is reportedly in the plans of a Muppets reboot for its streaming service. Again. Again. I'm looking forward to that. I enjoyed the Muppet show. I don't think anyone did. Or here come the Muppets, or the Muppets return to Manhattan to pick up a Just cell phone. Just do the drop. Muppet show. It's no secret that Disney's upcoming streaming service will bank on familiar names, but now we're getting a clearer sense of what that means. Uh, Hollywood Reporter sources have claimed that Disney is working on a reboot of the Muppets, the short-lived ABC comedy that followed the lives of current Miss Piggy and crew. Okay. Other details aren't clear, but the series is reportedly in its earliest stages. They don't even have a writer for it yet. Okay. Well, they didn't have a writer for the last one either. Uh, they also said that Disney was exploring projects based on other recognizable names, including Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Father of the Bride, The Mighty bring, Ducks. Bring, bring back... Uh, Rick Moranis? Rick Moranis. Yeah, bring back no, Rick Moranis. If Rick Moranis is coming back, he's doing Spaceballs 2 first. Mm. Then he can do whatever the crap he wants. I don't care. What if we do Honey, I Shrunk the Muppets? <laughs> Honey, I Shrunk the uh, Spaceballs? I believe that's called Muppet Babies. Ha! Uh, no, you get that one. Yeah. 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 All right, there All we right. go. Ah, sick! Ah! Haha, uh -huh, now you're infected. Yep. Uh, oh, and you might have mono, too. Uh, Father of the Bride, the Why Mighty Ducks, lazy? and the Parent Trap. <laughs> so, in essence, if you have any positive memory associated with a Disney production, there's a chance, even though a slim chance, it might be coming back as a streaming series. Bringing it back, baby. Bringing it back. Bringing it back. Now, this was something that I thought was cool. Okay. Qualcomm, who is... I was like, a freezer! That, no, that's cold. Oh. A refrigerator would be cool. Ooh, yes. Let's see. Now, Qualcomm, who is a manufacturer of microchips mm -hmm. and microchip accessories. Integrated circuitry, like uh, the modems in your iPhone. True. Uh, they are making the Snapdragon 845 processor. Now, Snapdragon is just the series of 
processor that it is, mm -hmm. and 845 is basically like the model number, like the make and model. You'll find them in a lot of Android smartphones. You will. But what they're doing is What now, are they doing? Along with the uh, graphics, camera support, and AI processing, they have now announced a broadcast audio function. As in FM, like... No. What, what do you mean, broadcast audio? Like multiple, multiple Bluetooth device audio Ooh. speaker support. So I could send it to multiple Bluetooth speakers, like I could send it to Bluetooth speakers and headphones all at one time? Uh-huh. So I could annoy myself and other people equally? Exactly. Ooh. So instead of having to get like all these smart speakers that are connected within themselves, you just mm. can have any speaker that's Bluetooth capable and the phone will just be like, be free, my children. I like Go that. Go everywhere. That's cool. Because it's going to save you an ass load of money. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So, for example, if you want to play a podcast throughout the house via multiple speakers, ta-da. Mm -hmm. What? I'm just getting it. Uh, what are those? What? Exactly. I use too many headphones. <laughs> uh, they're also going to have something called automatic retransmission and packet loss concealment. So you're going to have near perfect synchronization. Ooh, synchronization, that's important. Especially if you're in the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're listening to a ball game, wouldn't it be cool if it was a slight after effect? It's true. Could it consider myself, self, 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 self. And that's how the call thumb chip works. Right? Right, totally. Speaking Nailed it. of that, uh -huh. who had their 5,000th day anniversary a few days ago? Uh, the rover uh, Opportunity on Mars. It did. That it, is it was 5,000 Martian days, which are or longer. Souls. souls, which are longer than the Earth day. By what, 40 minutes, I think? It's Something like that, about 40 minutes, yeah. So, so, this past weekend, NASA's Opportunity rover spent its 5,000th day on Mars. Hooray! Happy birthday! Hooray! Which, Ish. sadly, it sings happy birthday to itself on yeah. the day it landed, which sounds really depressing. It does. It has, a, like, a little ultrasonic thing. Yeah, you wouldn't hear it because there's, like, no air. But it does. Yeah, but it it does. sings it to itself in silence and then sheds robot tears. It does. So while this is a feat in and of itself, it's even more impressive when you consider that it was only scheduled and planned to last 90 Martian days out on Mars. Pretty impressive. All right. So, hey, you're only supposed to be here for three months, and then your in-laws are there for seven years. Right. Six years? Six years. Wow. Wait, uh, 5,000 days? Uh, uh, 10 years. 25 <laughs> years. Well, what year 365, is well. 40 extra minutes. Hey, Siri, what's 5,000 divided by 365? It's about 1,666. No, not by three. <laughs> hey, Siri, what's 5,000 <laughs> divided by, wait, hold on. Hey Siri, how many days in a Martian year? Here's some information. Uh, how many days in a Martian year? Here is what I found. Uh, ooh, e. How many days are there in a year? Wait, I can I can do the math. All right, hold on. I can do the math here. Come on, Wolfram Alpha. Don't let me down. I'll continue eating chicken while you do that. Well, it's going to be really boring because it's, it's going to be sitting here. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Thanks, Google. Uh, <laughs> shit. Fuck you, Jerry. Uh, 687. So. So 5,000 divided by 687. Exactly. 5,000 divided by... Hey Siri, what's 5,000 divided by 687? Because you didn't learn the first time. That would be about 7.278. 7.278 so seven years. years, yeah. You're not old enough to drink yet. So you're supposed to be there for three months. Right. And you're there Earth for days. seven years. Martian years. Yeah. Well, it could be 90 souls. Right. They don't well, say. Earth years, that's... What's 5,000 divided by 365? The answer is about... What's 500 divided by 365? No, you want 5,000, not 500. It's about 1.3698. Yeah, close enough. Uh, 13.69 years. Uh, so still. Yeah, it's a long time. So not old enough to go to high school, as long as they didn't stay back in your grade. Yeah. yeah, some people are on the five-year plan. Uh, let's see. Both Opportunity and his companion rover Spirit were launched towards 
Mars in 2003, landing on two different parts of the planet in January 2004. Mm -hmm. Neither were expected to make it through Mars' harsh winter, though, which lasts about twice as long as ours and is severely lacking in light. Mm -hmm. But NASA's team discovered that pointing the rovers towards the north and towards the sun was enough to keep them powered through the winter. Nice. Nope. Science! Further, making sure the rovers were on north-facing slopes each winter helped to keep them going for years longer than they were ever intended to function. Spirit got stuck in the Martian soil in 2010, preventing it from pointing its solar panels towards the sun, so they just decided to let it die. And that was back in 2011. Right. Uh, let's see. But Opportunity has kept trucking, even though some not significant, even through some not significant damage, and has now traveled over 28 miles and sent back 225,000 images back to Earth, That's which you can awesome. actually go online and see. That is quite literally awesome. Uh, opportunity hit its 5,000 soul, which lasts around 40 minutes longer than Earth Day this past Saturday. Nice. Happy 5,000th. Yeah. Any more interesting stories or... Wait for crap? it. Wait for it. Fashion emergency. Nope. No one cares about that. Nope. Nope. Hey, ever had this problem aboard an airliner? Sure have. Sure. There's the babies that won't stop crying. The kids kicking your seat and annoying you. But... What about the guy sitting next to you who can't, or won't, stop passing gas? Uh, well, without making judgments on which one is worth worse, uh, a Transavia Airlines flight traveling from Dubai to Amsterdam fucking Transavia uh, was forced to make an emergency landing after a fight erupted midair over an elderly passenger who would reportedly not stop passing gas. The plane landed at Vienna International Airport after two young, male Dutch-Moroccan passengers began complaining to flight attendants, and then one of them threatened a stewardess. This one, the stewardess went up front, told the pilot, and he apparently decided the guys could become a serious danger to flight safety, and they needed to be removed. The elderly gentleman who caused the ruckus was not removed, and farted merrily all the way. Uh, oh, wait, here's the thing. Yeah? There's a difference between, oh, Brad just fucking dropped ass next to me. Right. And there's a difference between, Brad hasn't wiped his ass in a week and just dropped ass next to me, mm. and now the entire cabin smells like death. Right. If the old dude is just being an old dude and he's farting, uh, and it doesn't smell, put your headphones in and just go. Well, if it didn't smell, then you wouldn't know. No, you can still hear it. Uh, yeah, it if you take pride in a fart There's like always, we do, well, uh, you, you're also most people don't also try and blow out an O-ring. Oh, I try. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I'm just throwing it out there. Well, maybe they're just severely lacking in their uh, flatulent potential. Uh-huh. Huh. Uh huh. Did Did you watch the video of Fergie? Uh, attempting to sing the national anthem before the NBA All Star Game. I heard about it. I heard it was an ass disaster. I like. I can listen. Well, yeah, I can listen to quite a lot. I got through exactly six seconds of that before I had to turn it off. Was it like nails on a chalkboard? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wait. 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 Hold on. Copyrighted. Yeah. What? What? Whatever. It's. It's. It. Boof. Uh. No, I don't want to hear it then. My virgin ears. But, no, hold on. I don't have Fergie torture in my head. Leave but it. No, you will. No, don't. No, no, but no, it's, it's, it's happening. It. You can't make me. Yeah, I can. Uh, you're, you're too weak to get up or something. Oh, yeah, watch this. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. la, 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 See, it's so horrible people won't even post it online. Yeah, oh, wait, there we go. Oh, oh. oh. Has it been removed due to being horrible? Probably. <laughs> yeah, that's one we don't see that often. Yeah, yeah, come on, we'll play after ad. Ooh, get YouTube red. Get yeah. YouTube no, red. I'm not paying for the money. Come on, fast forward. Oh, wait, it's people talking about it. People talking about it. Oh, this sucks. People, oh, wait, wait, I see some.
Yeah. It was not that her voice was bad. That was the best part I heard. Oh. That was like, it was like, honestly, like, it was like, and I'm like, um, uh, everyone's going to tune out right now, but it was like, oh, oh say, it was like Morty from freaking Morty singing it. <laughs> it was, it was like, you know, like, Morty, 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 sing, sing, sing the national anthem, Morty. Oh, okay, well, Rick. Then they, they have to do oh, it on the other oh, planet. Oh, 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 say, can you see? Well, that's no fair. You can't say that because they won a rock competition on the other planet. So they they did, but it was, yeah, but he wasn't singing at the time. He was just, Marty, Marty, play, play me a sick beat. <laughs> that was true. it. That was it. He wasn't singing. Yeah. All right, you got me there. I'm just saying, it was like, it would be per per pe So someone who tried to woohoo dazzle the national anthem I don't know what it was. It would be per per did Did anyone check her? Like, was, did, the only thing I can suggest is maybe someone should have, like, they should have followed concussion protocol after, <laughs> like, for, like, first check her for concussion and then check everyone else. After just slamming their head against the <laughs> wall or something, uh, yeah. So it well, that was uh, pretty, that was pretty bad, pretty pretty bad, pretty bad. Well, here's some good news. Oh, good, good. Uh, so if you listen to Fergie and you have heart disease now because your heart just could not take <laughs> okay. that kind of torture to our wonderful country, uh -huh. Google AI now has an eye scan that can predict your heart disease. Well, hot damn. After Chinese, they're like, the robot just enters the room looks at Chinese like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so Alphabet, a.k.a. Google, uh -huh. uh, they have a health science company called Verily. And they've been developing smartwatches made for medical studies to mass producing infected mosquitoes to curb their population because we have the technology. So let's just set them against each other. So now scientists from the division now have a new endeavor, assessing heart disease by staring into patients' eyes. Now what they did is they have an algorithm that evaluated eye scans, and after refining its model with machine learning, it was able to predict cardiovascular risk factors like age, gender, and blood pressure. Interesting. So uh, two overweight white guys in their mid-30s with no hair, probably a really high risk for... Son of a bitch. Yeah. Uh, but... Oop. Button popped. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ding. Ding. And Brad has to buy a new lens for the camera. But it happens. This could lead to easier and potentially quicker analysis than a blood test with roughly the same accuracy as current methods. Now, the study isn't without limitations, given that it only surveyed eye images with a 45-degree field of view. Yeah, so this only works with people with eyes. If you don't have eyes, you're, you're, you're done. doesn't work. Sorry, bro. Uh, it's not... Yet ready for clinical testing, but when it does, hopefully it'll make it a uh, much awesomer. There you go. Huh? Do I have heart disease? Hold on. Hold your cell phone up. Your uh, yeah, that's really what it's going to be. Your iPhone twenty-seven, yeah, three Q or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, hey, did you know? I'm hey. sure you you heard about this. I sure did. Uh, are we are we good with that news story? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, that uh, You're recently so was today. Chinese New Year. It is now the Year of the Dog. <laughs> So, some celebrities born in the year of the dog. When's the year of the cock? I think we passed it. God damn it. Yeah. I always miss the cock. Uh, some people born in the year of the dog include singers Madonna, Michael Jackson, Mariah Carey, <laughs> Justin Bieber. I think that's generous. Uh, Elvis Presley, Prince, Dolly Parton, Andrea Bocelli, Linda Ronstadt, Liza Minnelli, Luis Miguel, and Cher. <coughs> Other famous people include Prince William, Steven Spielberg, Winston Churchill, Bill Clinton, Benjamin Franklin, who, Herbert Hoover, George W. Bush, uh, Kate Middleton, Socrates, Jane Goodall, Mother Teresa, and D.T. Trump. I love Socrates, Jane Goodall. Good old Socrates, Jane Goodall. Um, there you go. Oh, by the way, let's see. Netflix has, uh, this is new to Netflix, has put together a series that... Uh, Many high school students could possibly relate to. It's called Everything Sucks. Uh, TV Guide reports a series is set in high school uh, in Boring, Oregon, which is an actual place back in 1996, and will follow 
quote, two boring high school freshmen and their friends as they bridge the gap between their dorky AV club and the much cooler drama students, bubbling through lofty dreams of romance and the stark reality of self-identification, unquote. Well, that's a shitty description. Uh, since they said much cooler drama students, now you know it's a fantasy. Yep, sounds like, uh, just like your high school career, doesn't it? Nah. Uh, the show stars Jahi Watson and Peyton Kennedy, who are 14 years old in real life, and premieres, uh, premiered last week on Netflix. Uh, liked it the first time when it was called Freaks and Geeks. Yeah, Freaks and Geeks was much better. Uh, also... I do actually have coming to home theaters after uh, Tech News too. so more sweet. things coming than just that. Well, in case you need something to eat while uh, coming to home theaters... Which, obviously, we do. Uh, the world's largest delivery pizza has been unveiled in... Michigan, so that might take a while to get here, so you might want to order now. Steve Molly, uh, owner of Molly Sports Squa Bar and Grill in Southgate, Michigan, cooked up a 72-inch pie with help from his crew Wednesday. He sent pictures of the pizza to Guinness Book for official certification. The previous record was for a 54-inch pizza. Molly says the customers can order his massive pizza for a starting price of $300. Add 50 bucks if you want extra cheese. Delivery is free within five miles. The business owner, How do you deliver that? That's up to them. Uh, the business owner set another Guinness record for last summer by serving up a 1,796 pound hamburger. They didn't say it was coming to your house in the round. <laughs> house in the round. My guess is they have to have either like a box truck or a crazy roof rack. Or they just give it to you by the slice. Yeah, they just, yeah, something like that. They cook it in the whole pie, and then they bring it to you, like, slice by slice. They break it up. Yeah. Now, I was just watching, excuse me, an episode of Good Mythical Morning. Uh-huh. And they actually had, I don't know, maybe this was at the time. I think it was, like, a two- or three-year-old uh, thing. Uh-huh. They had a huge, huge pizza. Okay. Like, I'm talking wider than this table. Right. And just, like, like four foot by four foot. Huh. Uh, if not that's bigger. A big, that's a big pizza. Of course, they didn't have inline uh, links back when they did that, so I can't go on my uh, YouTube-enabled TV and just go, hey, I want to watch that, because, like, nope, that didn't exist yet. Right. Like, God damn it. Uh, made me hungry. Let's see. Hmm. Nope, still don't care, still don't care. Nope, Ed Sheeran, don't care. All right, what else we got for tech news? Uh, yep. Oh, come on, there has to be more than two stories. No. Really, that's it? There I, is I don't a believe you. Super Mario Brothers encyclopedia. That I believe. You would believe it because it's true. Yeah, would I, though? Unfortunately. Know? Man, that changes is crazy. <laughs> it really is, but it's so delicious. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's available only in Japan. That is unfortunate. Until October 23rd. Of this year? Of this year. That's a long time to wait for. Why, is it being translated from Japanese? It takes Pro a while? Probably. Mm. Uh, so Nintendo did many things to mark the 30th anniversary of the Super Mario Brothers. But there's been one you, you couldn't usually get your hands on unless you lived in Japan, and that's the Super Mario Brothers Encyclopedia. Uh, you'll be glad that it's here... You'll be glad to hear that it's coming to the West, though. Mm -hmm. Dark Horse Publishing, which does a lot of uh, that kind of stuff, has announced that the official guide to Mario's universe will be available in a standard edition in the U.S. on October 23rd for $40. However, I went to go look at it on Amazon. Uh huh. Right now, on pre-sale, mm -hmm. it's 24 Ooh. So you can almost get half off by pre-ordering it now and then waiting eight months... And then just randomly, there's going to be a book that shows up on October 23rd. But and really, like, do you really fuck? need, like, how much is there to know about Mario? Like, Mario, he jumps, and mushrooms make him grow, and he can shoot fireballs if he eats a flower, <clears throat> and then he jumps on stuff and kills everything and rescues the princess. But she keeps getting ki uh, kidnapped, so he's obviously ter terribly inept. This thing's now, like two pages long. Now, wait. Is it just... Hammer time! I can't touch mm -mm. this. Now, is it just me... Or do you think that the entire Mario universe is just one guy on, like, separate horrible acid trips? So, pretty much the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is, is right now just... Rob is looking up the encyclopedia. 
Is anything is anything good in there? Well, it basically I'll, tells I'll you tell about you. all the levels. Yeah, tell us, Jay. The What's in there? Well, you didn't give me a chance. No, I'm not. Still not going to. That's true. Yeah. The, the 256 page. But God damn it. The 250 page, god damn it. That is very true. It's a big god damn it. The uh, 256 page book is full of information and artwork for 17 games in the Super Mario series, including character info, developer interviews, and other tidbits. <laughs> Just don't expect it to be up to date, as the dates suggest, because it's already out in Japan, mm-hmm. and it's probably been out for a little bit. Uh, you won't find Super Mario Odyssey, which is the new one for the Switch, or Super Mario Run, which is the one that came out for. Uh, mobile platform. Okay. Unless there's an addendum, which then maybe they could slip it into the back. That's what she said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and nice. this is going to focus on the core Mario games, not offshoots like Paper Mario, which mm-hmm. is probably a whole acid trip on its own. And despite the encyclopedia, quote unquote, in the title, this is more of a look back at a specific period of the franchise's history than a definitive compendium. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that word is. But I can kind of pronounce A uh, group of, yeah. Anyways. Okay. This is the last story next. Okay. Uh, there is a website. Yes, there is. Good talk, everyone. See Now, I'm going to see if you can guess it. I'll give you three guesses. Okay. This website just came about in the last three weeks because of an event. All right. Super Bowl. No. All right. This, all right you might have to guess what the website is. No, just what it's about. Okay. Uh, is there any more clues? No? Uh, this website came this about... This is something that's... Oh, where is Elon Musk's car? Yeah! Wow, I only needed two guesses. That's not bad. That's not bad at all, with absolutely no details. See? Uh, or where, 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 cool where, cool where is too. TeslaRoadster.com? No, just where is Roadster. Okay, all right, that's close up. enough. Now, this is just a guy that's doing this website. It's not an official right. Elon Musk or NASA thing. Right. So, so have ever wondered if there's a car floating through space? The answer is yes, and this will tell you where. Yes. So the satellite guru's name is Ben Pearson, and his unofficial WhereIsRoadster.com website is tracking the electric vehicle based on NASA data and his own flight modeling, which it turns out is more accurate than Elon Musk's. <laughs> the site not only gives you an idea of the relative position and speed, but offers fun tidbits such as the number of times the car has voided its 36,000-mile warranty <laughs> and its equivalent fuel economy if had... If it had traveled under its own power. Uh, where, I'm going to see where that is. Last I checked, it was up to 180 miles a gallon. That's not bad. Well, that, that also includes, like, all the rocket fuel spent. Well. Which is, this sounds pretty good. Now, as of this past Sunday, on uh, February 18th, the car is about 2.1 million miles away from Earth and hurling towards Mars. Mm-hmm. Mars. It is Mars. now 3,175,146, 48, 40, 50, 52 miles from Earth. Uh, moving away at a speed of 7,485 miles an hour. It Which is, is even more because at the time of this story, mm-hmm. it was at 43,145 miles per hour. Well, it, now it's at 42,007. Uh, it's moving towards Mars at 42,000. So the, some gravity must have slowed well, it down. Well, no, no, no. It's, it's more of like how, how, what it's moving relative to. So it's moving away from Earth at 7,485 miles an hour. It's moving towards Mars at 42,749. So you think of like the movement of Earth and movement of Mars. It's moving away from Earth slower than it is approaching Mars. Ah. That makes any sense. Yep. The, the car is 92,648,828 miles from the sun, moving away from the sun at 6,658 miles an hour. And it exceeded its 36,000 mile warranty 860.4 times while driving around the sun, moving at a speed of 69,915 miles an hour. Achieved a fuel economy of 245.8 miles an hour, according to the website. This is currently. Um, mm-hmm. And assuming the battery still works, Starman has listened to Space Oddity 4,711 times since launch in one year. Uh, and to Is There Life on Mars 6,348 times in the other year. That's not bad. Now, the car won't actually orbit Mars or venture into the asteroid belt. If it keeps on its current trajectory, it should venture just past Mars before being pulled back towards the center of the solar system. It should be within about 7 million miles of Mars. Yeah, so don't expect the car to get close to other celestial bodies very often. Its closest approach to Mars in the near future will be on October 7th of 2020, so a little over two years from now. When it drifts, 
within 0 0.05 AU of the planet, and an AU is? Astronomical unit, the distance of the Earth to the Sun. Which is? Uh, it varies, but between 89 million and 92 million miles. Uh, there you go. The number they gave was 92,955,807.3. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Research, bitch. S stuff, I science, did, memory, research. learnings, bitch. None. Zero. <laughs> Void. Vacancy. Void. For rent. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It's cozy. One of the car's closest approaches to home won't incur in, occur until... Oh, it's going to be a while. I don't know, like 100 years from now? 2091. Yeah, yeah, but almost, yeah. So I'll be 110, you'll be 100... Less. Less. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah, no, um, the uh, folks said, I can't remember who it was, what university, but they did a study of trying to determine what the odds of it were. Because obviously, like, a car crashing into... Like Mars, they don't want to contaminate like the micro microbial life there with anything from Earth because clearly the car hasn't been disinfected or anything like that. Right. So they, you know, they want to preserve it for research and all the rest of that. So they clearly don't want to crash into Mars. Um, the odds of it crashing, the odds are uh, pretty minuscule, or almost none that will crash into Mars. Mm -hmm. In the next million or so years, it's about a six percent chance that it'll crash into the Earth. And a 2.5% chance it'll crash into Venus. Cool. Neat, right? Very. Of course, every time it like whips around Mars or it whips around Earth, it gets a weird, you know, gravity uh, slingshot effect. So it could, you know, change the orbit and stuff, and that's to be determined. But right. still pretty neat. It is very neat. Yep. Uh, when the car does get within close range of Earth, it'll be 2.3 AU away. That's you mean distance of the Earth to the moon? No, when it comes back around towards Earth in 2091. 2.3 AU is twice the distance of the Earth to the sun, which is that's beyond Mars. That, that's, that's that article is clearly wrong. Well, I can only report what they report to me. Those are some sons of bitches. Well, coming to home theaters. Go because on. Because I have no way to prove how far away that car is really going to be in where... We're Science! Dead. We're, we're long dead. Yep. Netflix, March 1st, you can watch 300, Adventureland, Beer Fest, Casino, Cruel Intentions 1, 2, and 3, for all of your cruel intentioning needs. Uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall, Ghostbusters 1 and 2, but not the new one. Still haven't seen that. And mm -hmm. there's been movies that came out well after it that have already made it to uh, streaming, so. Uh, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry, and Wet Hot American Summer. On March 15th, you can watch Jackass 3.5. And on March 24th, you can watch 50 First Dates. Now on Hulu. And you're going to notice a lot of similarities with Hulu and Amazon. I guess they all just have the same... Right, no one's doing... Schedule. Everyone's trying to get their con content out as fast and wide as possible. Mm -hmm. March 1st, you can watch Bad News Bears, Die Another Day, Dirty Dancing, and Dirty Dan... <laughs> Die Another Day, Dirty Dancing? <laughs> <laughs> Bad News Bears die another day. That's yes. awesome. Uh, Dirty Dancing, Dirty Dancing Havana Nights. Never knew that it even existed. Mm -hmm. uh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, Earth Girls Are Easy, GoldenEye Hackers, which is uh, like one of the real first, would you say it's like one of the real first like computer technology type movies? Yeah. Aside from Tron. What movie? Hackers. Is it what? Angelina Jolie's like first big role. He, he knows what it is, but... Would you say it's like one of the first mainstream like tech movies? It involved computers and all this stuff? Dude, God, no. <laughs> what else would you throw into there? Um, War Games. Alright, War Games. Cloak and Dagger. Never heard of it. Exactly. But I, I, movies are scary, so. So that's two. And Tron, so three. What else you got? Westworld. I don't know what that is. West, no, we're, we're talking, that was a movie? Yeah, it was a movie, written and directed by Michael Crichton in the 70s. Oh, wow, how about that? Huh. Oh, that's what the HBO series is based on? Yeah. Oh, well, how about that? Learn something new every day, or at least today. I didn't learn anything new yesterday. Yeah, but you know what they don't have? Young Angelina Jolie. Anyway, National Lampoon's Dirty Movie, didn't know that was even a thing. National Lamp 
National Lampoon's Dorm Days 2, College at Sea. Shoes. What? Is that just something you have at home, or is that a movie? That's a movie. Oh. Uh, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, The World Is Not Enough, and Triple X. I'm guessing it's another uh, 007 type run again. Sure. Uh, coming March 6th, Fantasia 2000. Coming March 9th, the new Power Rangers movie from last year. Uh, March 24th on Hulu, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Mm hmm. And March 28th, uh, the reboot of Roseanne, which is all the same cast from the original Roseanne, just now. I'd be very interested to see that. I am too, because I, I actually did genuinely like Roseanne. I, yeah, I, I watched, yeah. It was John Goodman and Roseanne, you know. Yeah. They, they had good chemistry. Yep. So I, I'm, I'm definitely going to give it a shot. Yep. Uh, not keeping my hopes up, but, but I'm going to give it a shot. It's, wor it's worth it to see. Yeah, why not? Uh, if only because John Goodman's a national treasure. He is. He is. He, he is, is an absolute national treasure. treasure, yeah. Coming to Amazon Streaming with Prime membership. Don't Ooh, forget to have your Prime. Yeah. Bad News Bears, Die Another Day, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. <laughs> Sorry, that's all I can think of is the combined movie now. I want to see that movie. We all do. Fatal Instinct, For Your Eyes Only, GoldenEye, Hackers, I'm Gonna Get You, Sucker. All right. Kingpin, License to Kill, Moonraker. Uh, National Lampoon's Dirty Movie, National Lampoon's Door Days 2, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, The World Is Not Enough, Tomorrow Never Dies. This, I actually started watching on the way back from Hawaii, mm -hmm. and then I just got talking to the dude next to me and I didn't watch it, so now I actually have a chance. It's Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets. Mm. Did you see it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying and it's going to be a uh, box office smash, but... For all the movie that, money that got dumped into that, it just like... Whoever is the prop master in that deserves to be, like, fired out of a cannon into the sun. Oh, canonized. Like, that and costumes, like, just not, it's just not well put together. It's not good. Now, where did this come from? Because all of a sudden... It's a book. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh. It's French. We. Oui. It's a French book. We. Oui. The book is much better than the, uh, than the movie. That's usually how it goes. Uh, have you seen we the movie? We didn't say... Have you read the book? A little bit. Not in French. We. Oui. <laughs> yeah, because uh, the woman's like oh this movie's on here i told her to watch it I'm like what is it she's like blah 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 blah. i'm like yeah whatever <laughs> and then on the way back it's like yeah quit farting you old lady yeah <laughs> <laughs> but then on the way back i put on the uh entertainment infotainment package thing yep. and also i was just in there like eh, fuck it Bing. and there was space things yeah it's not I, great yeah i basically halfway through is when I started talking to do next to like me. Like, there's a, there's a level of suspended disbelief you're willing to go through for a movie. This, like, bye! Nope. Alternate not even, universe. It's an alternate universe. Not even close. Alternate universe. No, it's the future, and it's not even fucking it's close. It's the future universe. Alternately. Not even, no, no, just not nearly, no. 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 Are you watching Westworld on YouTube? No, I'm watching the computer that wore tennis shoes. The computer that wore tennis shoes on YouTube. Fantastic. That evidently drives right. down the 101. Speaking about... Uh, oh, I still got four more movies. Oh, okay. Uh, I got Triple X, Triple X Day of the Union. That's all on March 1st on Amazon Prime streaming. March 9th, you'll have the Power Rangers. And on March 31st, the Blue Lagoon, the original one with Brooke Shields. Okay. And her body stunt double because she was 15 and couldn't be naked. There you go. Uh, now, how about this? How about this? How about this? Now, uh, coming to actual theaters this year, I want to gauge your excitement for various movies. Uh, so... <laughs> Are you really think? Rob, jump in here. All right. Because nothing... Yeah. All right. March 16th is Tomb Raider, which stars uh, Alicia Vickla uh, Vikander uh, as Laura Croft. Where Were you on, on the interest scale 1 to 10, Rob, were you? On the interest scale of 1 to 10? Yeah. The new, new, new Tomb Raider? 10 being gotta see it, 1 being... 10 being gotta see it... <laughs> 10 being gotta see it, one being I don't even think I'd watch this if it were on TNT. One. One, wow. Wow, that's pretty That's pretty low. I'm actually gonna kinda agree with him on that one. But this is like, how many times have they done this now? A movie? A reboot, so this would be the third. A third reboot? Wait, they really? did another Tomb Raider movies? No, this would only be the third movie. Oh, third movie. Well, they did the other ones with... Um, how many had Angelina? Angelina Jolie. Did the first two have Angelina? Or just one? Yeah, first two did. Oh, they did? Yeah. I thought one did, then they got another actress, and then they got, this is another actress. Yeah, that's how bad the second one was. Yeah, they weren't great. 
Yeah, no one paid well, any attention. That's very hey, uh, hey, I didn't even remember that Angelina Jolie did movies at all until you reminded me. I thought, like, oh, they're just pulling a video game. For oh, wait, they already did this. <laughs> uh, Robin Hood, which... Uh, like the funny one or the... It's Robin Hood Orange Origins. Uh, I like oranges better. Uh, uh, Robin Hood Origins Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, Robin Hood Origins. On paper, this is uh, ground that the Russell Crowe headlined and Ridley Scott directed Robin Hood movie tried to cover back in 2010. Uh... Of course, due to inspire sequels, uh, they fancied watching Scott, and, uh, but few fancied watching Scott and Crow do another one. Lionsgate is hoping that uh, putting Taron Egerton at the heart of the film will be a smarter move. He's surrounded by a cast including Jamie Foxx, Jamie uh, Dornan, uh, Eve Hewson, Ben Mendelsohn, and Tim Minchin. I've heard of none of those people. Uh, by the way, the film is uh, no longer called Robin Hood Origins. It's just plain old Robin Hood now. Uh, and Otto Bathurst from The Peaky Blinders. Is uh, directing. On a scale of one to ten, Rob. One. Jay? Wow. I don't watch movies. So okay. Scary. Uh, all right. March thirtieth, Steven Spielberg's adaptation of Ernest Cline's Nerd Gold Tome, oh Ready, my Player, God, Ready one. Player One. March thirtieth. I want. I don't know if I'll actually go see it in movie theater because. So you're like uh, somewhere around people a annoy four to me. Five. People annoy me you way too stop. much. You're, like, people, you're just like, people annoy me. Next. Yeah. Rob, well, how about you? Negative 10. Negative 10? Who's Why? Do you know, you're saying no one cares. I've read several reviews of the book, and it sounds like, hey, we made 80s the most in picture. It, it's 80s the most picture? the motion picture? I'd watch that. Yeah, that's the, no the, fair. The trailer, you haven't read it yourself. The, the trailer looks boring as shit. The, con the, the, the concept sounds boring as shit and I i'd rather it. read something more original than has than has to rely on referencing in that book's time frame something that happened 70 years ago would and you the, like to actually read the book no and why? The, the fact of the matter is I, it literally does not interest me you know why i'm dubious of the movie okay spielberg that'll be good or be bad that'll be bad that I, it will be i don't trust him anymore i don't i haven't trusted him since World? Yeah. I don't. I don't. I, I'll wait for it to come to streaming. In fairness, I haven't seen Lincoln, which is supposed to be good. But everything else, yeah. He, he hasn't been on in Like any, like years. the pop culture movies? Mm, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did, did you see The Terminal? Uh, Actually, did he do that one? Wait, you, are you talking the one with Tom Hanks? Yeah, did he do that? I don't. All right. Jay, actually, look that up. Actually, Catch Me If You Can wasn't bad. Wait, did, wait he, he directed he, Catch Me If You Can? That. That uh, all right, that one was good. All right, I have greater hope now. What movie am I See, I didn't up? know. Like, it's so under the radar on that sort of stuff. But, like, it, uh, the, the Terminal. Thank you. With Tom Hanks. Um, but, like, a lot of that stuff was, like, Catch Me If You Can was really good. You know, he's done, like, Schindler List, which, which is, like, a masterpiece. Uh, yeah, he did The Terminal, he, that was not good. The Terminal? Yeah. With Tom Hanks? Yeah. I enjoyed it. Uh, no? Yeah. All right. I have greater hope now. I'm not holding my breath still, but I just have this image in my head. It's not, not good. It was uh, directed by Steven Spielberg. It was directed. All right. That image in your head should be Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Oh, wait. He directed that? Oh, God, yes. Oh, God, no. Uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, no. Um, you April. that stuff? Really cool. That's nice. Is it really? No, it's actually probably warm, but it's okay. really cool. Uh, in April, Magic Camp. Which is uh, Disney's first entry into summer blockbuster season 2018. It's an action one of its big franchise movies. Rather, it's got potential franchise launcher Magic Camp from Mean Girls director Mark Walters. Magic Camp. Uh, Ready Player One was actually supposed to come out a while ago. Yep. But its original release date was going to be right the same weekend as Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah, no. Yeah, so it's like, no, let's hold off for a while until they get it out of there. <coughs> Rob, so where do you care? Do you care about Magic Camp at all? Le less or more than Ready Player One. <laughs> so is this minus 11? Uh, I just think I have an axe to grind against Ready Player One. Okay. Alright, Ready Player One is negative. Ready Player One is that one like everything else. Ready, he's saying Ready Player One is that one. So far, all, on all, yes, everything is at a one. He's saying everything's at a one. Rob is the ultimate cynic. Uh, X-Men no. The New Mutants coming out April 13th. Uh, from 20th Century Fox, uh, it's uh, from the Fault in Our Stars director Josh Boone, steering that one, and the implication that I have a much more grounded and Mortal dramatic Kombat? read Young Adult Foundation than the recent X-Men movies. What's that? I'm pretty sure they did Mortal Kombat, didn't they? 
Maybe. Huh. The New Mutants will focus on the first bunch of graduates from Professor, Professor Charles Xavier's School for Gifted Children. pro X, yo. And strong rumors suggest <clears throat> that James McAvoy <clears throat> will be back uh, as Professor X for a start. The rest of the cast remains unconfirmed, but some of the younger members of the X-Men Apocalypse cast are possible candidates for an appearance. Rumors also seem to heavily imply that Game of Thrones, Maisie Williams, and the witches Anna Taylor Joy have been cast in lead roles. Rob, where are you feeling on this one? Three. Three, Jay? Scared. Yeah, right. Uh, the Pact. Uh, this is one of the R-rated <clears throat> comedies. The Pact comes from Kay Cannon, who wrote the Pitch Perfect trilogy. Uh, Cannon also makes her directorial debut here with a story following three dads who try to stop their daughters from having sex on prom night. Leslie Mann and John Cena lead the cast. You almost had me until then. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Rob? Because Leslie Mann I don't find funny at all. John Cena, I've never really seen him. I know he's not oh, in a Oh, Mark Wahlberg's things. in it. Aww. Oh, wow. You're or is that Donnie Wahlberg? America's buried it's, This looks like a Wahlberg. Which Wahlberg is that? No one knows which Wahlberg it is. No one cares. The slightly uglier like Wahlberg. Which, uh, Wahlberg unless it was Mark who had a bad day. Um, so, uh, where, where are we feeling on this one? Rob? One. one, Jay? Scared. Scared. Uh, Rampage, April 20th. Dwayne The Rock. Johnson traditionally has two or three movies out each summer. 2018 isn't bucking the trend. Firstly, then, this is, by the way, this is from denageek.com. Firstly, then is Rampage, which is based on the monsters destroying buildings, video games of the 1980s. Given how thin the plot of the Rampage games was, it's basically the plot to that? apparently it's basically an excuse for Johnson and his San Andreas director Brad Payton to wreak further havoc and pretty much uh, put together whatever they plot uh, they like to set it against. Ryan Engel and Colton Cuse have worked on the script. The supporting cast includes Naomi Harris, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, and Malkin Ackerman. Rob, two, two. wow, two. Wow. Jay? Scared. Scared. Um, let's see if this perks Rob up. In May, Avengers, Affin Infin Affinity, Infinity War, <laughs> May 4th, coming up May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Huh. Uh, so, um. Why have they never released a Star Wars movie on May the 4th be with you? Because it's a stupid fucking thing. See, That's why Rob, Rob is the it. ultimate cynic. Because then right. you'd be forced to go see a Star Wars movie on the day you loathe. All right, Rob. Avengers Infinity War. This is right up your alley. Yeah, that's true. Uh, am I going to see it? Yeah, but it's probably about uh, eight, seven, eight. Seven or an eight. That's a, that's healthy. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's good. That's all goes. All... Everything else has gone to one. Seven's like I'll begrudgingly see it in the theater. <laughs> That's basically well, least, what it is. At least we have benchmarks. There you go, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, May 11th is Life of the Party, which is... Um, no one knows. Uh, third project for director Ben Falcone and star Melissa McCarthy, who co-wrote the script, too, on this one. Uh, and happy to be married in real life, and they have thus far put together Tammy and the Boss, two modestly profitable movies. Details for Life of the Party are under wraps, save for Gilly, uh, Jillian Jacobs and Maya Rudolph co-star. And Christina Aguilera is in there somewhere, too. Rob? One. Okay. Let's try this one. I, I think I know the answer on this one. Because he's a cynic. Star Wars Han Solo, May 25th. Seven. Seven. Oh, all right. Begrudgingly still? Yeah, I'm, uh, not much confidence in that one. This is just a Disney money grab. I mean... Yep. Uh, well, how about this? June. June 1st. Deadpool 2. <laughs> I'd rather see Ready Player One. You really? You don't like Deadpool? I can't stand Deadpool. Wow. Is it... Is it... Sometimes I question why Rob likes and dislikes things. Yeah, I'm really... Is it just because of Ryan Reynolds? Oh, uh, no. Actually, he was very good as Deadpool. Uh-huh. Okay. It's just the character of Deadpool itself. He just, Rob just doesn't like the character of Deadpool. I love the character of Deadpool. I've always thought he was hilarious, even in video games before the movie ever came out. All right. Scale uh, 1 to 10, Jay? Scary. Scary. Uh, uh, I was still wearing diapers in the 90s. Uh, that's not my fault. Speaking of get this over with. It's a lot easier. Uh, Ocean's 8. June 8th. Why? 
Perhaps not the most yeah, 11, expected. 11, 12, and 13, now we're down to 8. Franchise revival, but bringing back uh, of the Ocean's Capers may just re prove a smart move for Warner Brothers. Ocean's 8 immediately feels distinct for much of the rest of the fodder we're getting next summer. Fodder. It's a new crew, this time led by Sandra Bullock. She's joined by, joined by Anne Hathaway, Sarah Paulson, Dakota Fanning, Kate Blanchett, Katie Holmes, Helena Bottom Carter, Rihanna, Mindy Kaling, uh, Aquafina. There's a water bottle in it? A-W-K-W-A-F-I-N-A, -A -A, Aquafina. So someone named their kid after a water bottle, but changed the spelling, so it wasn't completely... And Richard Armitage, uh, Gary Ross, who helmed the first Hunger Games films, is directing this one, having mm -hmm. co-written screenplay with Olivia Milch. Rob? Uh, three, only because of Kate Blanchett. Three, only because of Kate Blanchett? Scary. Scary, okay. Uh, and because Michael Bay, Bumblebee, June 8th. This is their version of Han Solo. Yeah, still rather see Ready Player One. He would still rather see Ready Player One. What's that? Oh, wow. Or Deadpool. He'd rather see Deadpool than this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Like, I often wonder, like, a Michael Bay film, do they just go to, like, junkyards and locations and just, like, point the camera at stuff and shake it around and then figure out what they're going to do with the script later? They're like, quick! Get a picture of this junkyard. Shake the camera a lot. Um, add an explosion. Mark, uh, say a line. Mark, say, say, holy crap, bro. Uh, <laughs> dude, bro. Um, That's the equivalent of a canned response. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, like, knock some cars off the junkyard pile. All right, all right, we'll write this in post. Yeah. That's, that's Michael Bay is the only director I know who's like, sir, we don't have any script. I will do it in post. Yeah. Uh, all right, anyways. Oh my god, I want to write a movie like that. Yeah. This one... Can make that happen. This one could be interesting. It won't be. June 15th. Uh-huh. The Incredibles 2. The re incredibling Yes. Huh. Rob? Yeah, it's got it. Uh, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's probably a seven. It's seven out of Rob. That's healthy. Jay? Scary. Scary. Okay. So, hold on. Hey, Rob? Yeah? Are the Venture Brothers ever coming back? Okay. Jurassic World 2, June 22nd. Because Hollywood, like life, finds a way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rob? Uh, I would rather see Deadpool. Would rather see Deadpool, Jay? Scary. Scary, okay. Actually, double scary. Double scary, because it's two. Uh, June 29th. I saw it the first time when it was called The Lost World. You saw it the first time it was called The Lost World, yeah. Uh, June 29th, uh, the one you've been waiting for, Rob? Barbie? They're making a Barbie movie? Uh, I think they made a lot of them, but they're just like direct to DVD. Despite losing Amy Schumer from the lead role, Sony's still pressing ahead with its live action Barbie movie that Diablo Cody, Kim Carmele, and Jenny Bix have been working on the, the screenplay for. Given that the film doesn't have a director in place, as this article is being written, it may <laughs> yet be a project Sony pushes back. The studio hasn't announced Schumer's replacement yet either. Well, I don't think that's coming out this year. No, probably not. I, if I remember correctly what Amy Schumer looks like, uh -huh. she does not look like Barbie. Mm. Why would it have been a comedy? <laughs> it would have been oh, a comedy. comedy? I don't know. Oh. Maybe she was doing a voice. Maybe she's doing a voice Maybe she's doing a voice and it's animated. Well, I you thought never thought of that. Action. Who knows? We don't know. They only have a script. Uh, in July, coming out July 4th, The Purge 4. The 4th of July? Yeah. What does the 4th of July fall on? A Friday or a Tuesday? Yes. Oh. What day of the week does July 4th fall on? It's Wednesday. July 4th. Wednesday. Comes out on a Wednesday. Dead nuts middle. Oh, that's yeah. horrible. Uh, so the Purge 4, Rob? The repurgeoning. One. Jay? Scary. Yeah, scary movie. Uh, how about this, Rob? July 6th, the Friday. Uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah, it's also seven. Seven. Scary. Scary. Uh, I can get stung. July sixth. Uh, sounds like an Austin Powers movie. The Spy Who Dumped Me. Uh, it's instead it's a comedy starring Mila Kunis and Kate McKinnon as two best friends who discover that one of their exes was a spy. Susanna Fogel uh, is set to direct. No further details are known at the moment. No, though. Rob. Now you don't not even give it a two in hopes that it might be somewhat distantly related to Spies Like Us. You've given it a two. Jay? Scary. 
Okay. I did find out that Kate McKinnon is a lesbian. I didn't know that. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, not knowing that Kate McKinnon was a lesbian. Well, there you go. But now I do. But good for her. She's awesome. Hotel Transylvania 3 coming on July 13th. In the Hotel Rob? Transylvania. Uh, do, 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 looking. Jenny Taratoski is attached. Um, Adam Sandler isn't writing this one, but leads the voice cast again, along with Selena Gomez, Andy Samberg, uh, Jenny Taratoski, who toyed with handling the third film, uh, over to someone else, is back to direct. All right, so all right, we'll get them. Since he's involved, but I'm not going to see it, we'll get a three. It gets a three from Rob. Wow. wow. All right. That's out of respect. Uh, because The Rock uh, is a very busy man. July 13th, he starts a skyscraper. Uh, Yes, he plays yeah, he the skyscraper. He just stands there. Um, what's he doing this time? Defusing a hostage situation in a big tower block in China in the role of a former FBI hostage rescue team leader. Is his family trapped in the building too? Yup, that'll do. Well, of course it is. is. Also under attack by giant monsters. Also under attack by giant monsters. Yeah, he has to fight barehanded with no shirt on. It's basically Die Hard in China with doing the Rock Johnson, except just a remake and not as good. Hey, what do you think, Rob? Two. Two. You might not. You might get to see The Rock with no shirt on. There you go. Uh, Jay? It's scary. It's scary. Uh, how about this one, Rob? Okay. Alita, Battle Angel. Isn't that, <laughs> an, isn't that an anime? I think I just heard him grumble under his breath, and now he refuses to I talk think so. to us anymore. It's a project that James Cameron was set to direct before a long time for his Avatar commitments took precedence. Instead, he's overseeing the project while Robert Rodriguez, with his first feature since Sin City had Dame to Kill for, has directed it. Michelle Rodriguez, Jennifer Connelly, Marcella Ali, Christopher Waltz, Jackie Earl, Haley, Casper Van Diem, uh, Jeff Fahey, and Ed Screen are all in the cast. They're working from a screenplay by Cameron and Leda Calogritis. It's all based on the manga by Yukito Kishiro. Um, you'd imagine if it did well there, there are many sequels planned. That was actually... So what do you think, Rob? Where's your rating there? Well, first off, it's not coming out until December. No, July 20th. They moved it to December. So that's not necessarily a good sign. Not a good sign, he's saying. Happy Cameron was uh, removing stuff from the project. Right. Uh, Rodriguez isn't too bad. Uh, Jennifer Connelly 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 isn
Gary. Mary. Okay. Just wanted to wanted to confirm. Five minutes. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, some good movies in here so far. Uh, Scarface. Uh, <laughs> August tenth. You're at Meg. So it's called. It's called <laughs> Meg. Uh, the Statham. Jason Day Statham. Big shark, like a really big freaking shark fighting each other. That's it. So the Sharknado? It's a Megalodon, basically. Something, a movie about a Megalodon starring Jason Statham. Mm. It's my best Jason Statham. Well, you tried. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not, not great. great. Yeah. It's not bad. Rob? The what? The Meg. The what? Meg. You're <laughs> Meg. M E G. Meg. Meg. <laughs> Meg. One. One? Okay. Uh, well, there you go. Scary shark. Those are your blockbuster movies. You Blo I killed giant. What's that? You missed I Kill Giants. Did I? Yeah, it comes out in March. What's I Kill Giants? Uh, it's based on a graphic novel. And that's why I didn't miss it. It's based on a graphic novel. Awesome. Rob gives that one. Uh, he, Rob's like, it's freaking awesome. I give it a four. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll go see that. I'll give that one an eight. You eight? Wow, all right. But he won't read Ready Player One. He will not. You know, I know why? He's a busy home. man. He doesn't have time for that crap. No, you see, I read about the graphic novels that he references in Ready Player One. So, uh, so Jay, if people want to visit us on our website, or not website, because that's on fire, how about a YouTube page? I knew this a second ago. Damn it. Hold on. Does, does it start with youtube.com slash TV? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know if I paid the. I don't even know what maybe. accent that is, really. Hey, it's that. It's it's that right down there. No way. Um, and you have a graphic. Uh, if Get you want to go to our here. Facebook page, wherever they go. Hold on, I want to see what order these are in. It's Facebook.com/slash TV. No shit, you're two for two. Yes. That's not bad. And if people want to talk to us on the Twitter, they can be our like tweety 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 tweets at Twitter.com/slash TV. This is that German accent. Did you just watch Super Troopers today? Or I something? did not. Oh, all right. No. You can, you can always do <laughs> a really bad Canadian accent, eh? There we go. And now. if you uh, if you like to uh, take off your toque and put it down next to your keyboard and email us, you can email us at uh, nsls.tv, eh? Uh -uh. Uh, there you go. I'm sorry, nslstv at gmail.com. I forgot the rest of that because I said all that maple syrup on the brain. <laughs> <laughs> just, yes. Uh, what did you learn today? Uh, that you can be racist towards Canadians and people are okay with it. <laughs> well, they are very forgiving <laughs> folk. They're, they're like, hey, thanks for being racist. Hey. Sorry. No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry. What, what did you learn today? Movies are scary. I uh, Sure. And YouTube is a godsend for fixing shit. Um, if you want to fix anything, there's someone's got a video on Oh, that, yeah, you can fix anything on YouTube. I'll fix fix you and youtube will help you fix anything yes it will um so if you enjoyed the shit out of this show we invite you to come back in 90 short minutes and you can watch it again oh you can not that you would you've already seen the whole thing maybe you're tired maybe you think of us like bob ross painting and it's just that our dulcet tones will put you to sleep until one of us shouts really loud in your tv at 1 30 in the morning uh sorry Sorry. Pretty, sure, pretty sure you just woke up the house. <laughs> Good job, Brad. You're welcome. Yeah, that's your reminder to turn off the TV in case I just woke you up. You should really turn off the TV. See, you're wasting power. I'm an energy saver. I'm saving <laughs> the environment, and you I'm just, saving your power bill. You just told people watching us is wasting power. I stand by that statement. All right, as long as you're good with it. Who the hell might have say anything against it? Cablevision programming. Wasting power. No. <laughs> Let's see, that's a good voiceover. Like, uh, like, people haven't wasted this much power since Marvel created the Vision. That's a nerdy reference, right? Right? No? Somewhere better to go with. Listen, I don't see you people coming up with stupid lame ass jokes. I'm rocking out to the music. I'm just saying, you know. See, what, what would be other good insults for the show? Like, um, it's better watching people wish the Fireplace channel was us, so at least that way we'd be on fire. There's that. We could do that. 
It's a little dark though. We're better than well, watching. except for the fireplace, it's quite bright. Yeah, we're better than watching the paint drying channel. That's a channel. Probably. We should do that. We probably we should do that. We should just like paint a wall. Like that should be it. Like paint a wall, and you just have paint drying for four hours but on a YouTube channel. Paint dries in like thirty minutes or less. It does, but people would search that. Like that's more boring than paint drying, and then someone will search that on YouTube, and they'll come up with us. Like we should put that like as our tags in the YouTube videos, like paint drying. Watching paint. Well, like watching paint dry, <laughs> like like eating wallpaper paste and watching paint dry. The Not So Late Show. See you next week. Will we? Oh, we will.